Hi, everyone. I'm here again with David Wright. Thanks for being here, David. Thanks for having me, Steve. You know, um, David is at our, uh, our studio, our media room in Carson City at our Fitness for 10 Health Club. And uh, he's a personal trainer there. So if you guys are in the area, go by and say hi. Um, so, David, you know, I want to talk about something that I think a lot of people don't really think about because they're so influenced by social media and hype and things that are not realistic. For instance, how someone looks. Take this supplement, do this exercise program, and you're going to look like me. Well, guess what? You don't even look like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and so you you do shows, contests, mm -hmm. and we were just talking before we turn this on. You're not thinking, how can I maximize my health? I want to get my maximum health at, at a certain point. And I mean, that's not the objective of doing a contest. It's to make your body look a certain way. That's not realistic, right? Correct. Yeah. So just give us your thoughts on that. Yeah. So, I mean, to your point, Steve, in terms of, you know, like where I'm at even right now, 11 weeks out from my show, um, that's not something that year round I'm going to look this way. How nice would it be? It'd be great. But, you know, when you're when you're dieting down and, you know, doing those things for a show, you know, you're you're doing it for the aesthetic look, the specific look you want to go into for a show. You're not doing it to your point for, OK, I'm going to get to my healthiest point ever. And this is what I'm going to do now. That's not to say that, you know, dropping body fat, becoming a little more lean is not a good thing. It absolutely is. It's great. The less body fat you have, the healthier you are. But to the, the point where we see people who are, you know, influencers and you know, celebrities and all these people that are, you know, got these great eight pack abs and all these things. And all you have to do is this 30 minute workout and all these other gimmicks that are out there. Right. And they've been out there for a long time. You know, various people, hundreds probably of celebrities that, that have these, you know, get fit quick schemes that are out there. You're not going to look like them. And to your point, they don't look like them. Uh, most of the time as well, because people really have to realize, you know, a lot of times this is someone's full time job to look a specific way during photo shoots and product launches and whatever else they're doing for money. Um, that's the one thing we have to realize is just because somebody's on, you know, a free platform like Instagram or whatever, they're getting paid for that promotion of that product or for their coaching programs or or whatever so they're going to look a certain way now most of the time those those folks the the thing behind that is they're taking probably hundreds of photos um in in a short period of time so they look a certain way the rest of the year you know for months they're going to look more and i'm going to say this in quotes here normal um like a, a regular person, not this, you know, ripped, you know, whatever look that they give out. They use those, those media photos for promotions and everything else. So the rest of the year, they're going to look, you know, less cut and all those things than what they present. They'll present those all year long because that's, that's a marketing tool. Um, but yeah, so even for me, not being a, a huge social media influencer, but an influencer for myself, for my clients, really showing them how to do things. You've got to set realistic expectations and, you know, that person on Instagram or even like myself, I tell my clients personally that, you know, I'm not trying to turn you into me before contest prep or your, or me right now going into contest prep. What we want to do is the healthiest version of you, which is, yeah, let's lean down. Let's do some of these things, but we're not going to get to where I'm like, I'm going to go put you on a stage uh, in a couple months type of a thing, because that's not a sustainable thing. Um, when you get to the point where you're going to walk on stage, that's not the healthiest you've ever been. As a matter of fact, it's very unhealthy to do for any long periods of time. So, you know, once you're, that's why once you're on that stage, you know, you do your presentation, go through all of that stuff, you know, after that, you kind of start going backwards a little bit in a healthy way, kind of reintroducing the carbs and reintroducing the things that you kind of cut down on. 
to go back to kind of a, a homeostasis, a balance in your body so that you do get healthier again. Because, yeah, it's just not realistic. Yeah. And uh, how about you're going to reintroduce water to your body? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have a glass of water now, you know. <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about um, what is realistic for the average body. And, and we'll put that in perspective just so that, look, your body wants some subcutaneous body fat. Mm -hmm. That's fat that's under your skin. Look, you might be perfectly healthy and not be able to see your abs. That's probably oh, yeah. the case for most people. And we'll talk about men and women so that people can kind of get an idea in our opinions, what's realistic. So for me, you know, look, I'm in my 60s. Now, I haven't noticed that I go to the beach and everyone's lining up to see me take my shirt off. That's not how it is. But I'm not fat. I mean, I've been called fat, but I'm not fat. I'm healthy. I have a lot of lean tissue on me, muscle tissue for someone in their 60s or someone in their 20s even. Mm -hmm. um, but I have skinny legs and I have skinny arms and I've always been kind of thin. But my body probably likes to sit at about 15% body fat. I haven't been, a, and we're going to find out when we get that body scanner, mm -hmm. but that's about where I stay about 14%, maybe depending on how I'm being tested and, and what my, you know, visceral fat is and all that. But if I get up to like 18%, I'm still, I'm not going to look fat at 18%. No man is really going to look fat. Not very many men will look fat or even chunky at 18%. But my body's going, okay, get rid of some of it. That's right. me. If I get down below 12%, and I think most men are about like this, if, you, if you're a man of any age and your body gets down below 12% body fat, your body's probably not going to like it. What do you think about those numbers, David? Yeah, everybody kind of has their own natural kind of limit to where, you know, your body is happy, your body is healthy, um, and you don't have to overwork yourself to kind of get below that that threshold. Because really, and that's what a lot of people, even very fit people, people who work out all the time or things like that, even for myself, um, preparing for a show is kind of taking your body beneath what it's comfortable with at, you know, that natural level. So for me, I would, I would agree with you because I think that, you know, 12% is actually a very good number, 12 to 15, you know, somewhere around there is not, not unusual. It's actually fairly normal to, to stay in that range. It's well, range. when you say 12 to 15 is healthy, I'm not saying most men are 12 to 15 because most men are way more than 15%. Right. Most and, men. And yeah. Kind of what I look Your body at. likes that number, but most men are, look, let's face it. Most men are over 20%. Right. Well, and, and like 12 to 15%, I would say is something where, and again, everybody's different, but um, like for myself, for instance, like 12% would be great. Um, there's times that I, I definitely are and more than that, even being a competitor, working out all the time, stuff like that. I mean, if you're not super restrictive on what you eat and all those things, and sometimes during off season, I'm not, um, which is okay. Um, but I still eat relatively healthy. Now, when I go to a show and I'm at 4.3%, you know, basically dry and, and just, you know, ripped as could be. Right. And that's something that people go, gosh, I want to look like that. Well, you can't be 4% body fat for very long. And if you do, you're going to start causing all sorts of problems that you don't want to have. So, you know, the realistic thing for most people is like, oh, I want to get down below 10% body fat. Well, why do you want to do that? Like, what's the motivation that you want to do that? If you're doing a show, you're doing something, there's an end goal, an end date of it. Okay, let's talk about it. But for most people, go to the beach, go to wherever, just fit your clothes the way you want to, that kind of thing. You know, it, it's not necessary and it's not realistic. Um, but you do have to kind of whether you're a man or you're a woman, there is that natural level where 
yeah, you know, you could get down to, you know, a leaner version of yourself. Um, but you don't need to, you know, continuously push and push and push to get lower. There's a whole nother conversation there. But, um, you know, you really just want to stay where your body will naturally want to be because that's where you're going to feel the best. That's where you're going to, you know, look healthy, feel healthy. Um, be you know, healthy. And you're not going to look like you know, Instagram guy or girl who's out there because they don't look like that either, you know, most of the time. And, and so you just really got to set those expectations that you're not going to look like that person. Can you use them as motivation? Absolutely. But motivation and kind of idolizing are two completely different things. And people kind of just say, that's my goal. That's what I want to do without kind of understanding why they want to do that or what that person actually does or looks like, or, you know, things like that um, off camera, uh, because that's their life is on camera. So you don't see everything else behind and afterwards. So yeah, I just think it's really good for them to set expectations uh, that are that are very reasonable for themselves. And I, I want to use you as an example for for a minute. You don't look like this huge bodybuilder right now. But that's because you're under 10%. You're under yeah. 10% and you have 11 weeks to go to get down under 5%. Now, if people go to your social media channels, they're going to look at you now in this, um, in this video, in, in this little interview that we're having. They're going to go, he's little. But then when they see you with your shirt off, they're going to go, he's not little. <laughs> right. You know, Oops, surprise. <laughs> right. Because you can see the muscles. It looks so much different. Now, there's some people that naturally, they're usually, you know, late teenage years or early 20s that their body will naturally sit at 10%. That's rare. I don't even think that's 1% of the people. Their body is not going to sit naturally without them trying very hard at 10%. And you will be surprised at how good you look at 15%. Now, we'll, we'll get to women in a second, but we're talking about men right now because women need a higher body fat composition. Mm -hmm. So especially with clothes on, you're going to look really good. At about 15%, down as low as maybe 12%, you are going to look good. Your muscles are going to look full. You're going to be able to see your muscles. You're going to be able to see deltoids. You're going to be able to see arms and, and your legs. And you're going to look good. Um, it just, it's not show. And it's not these snapshots that are also doctored up. Um, oh, yeah with these celebrities and model influencers, people don't look like that. So we're after health. And so I just wanted to use that example about where you probably are now. You're under 10%. You're on your way down to cutting that in half, maybe. Mm -hmm. And if you're going, they can see, like I said, we'll give you where you can find him on social media, but you can see the difference in the pictures. And, um, it, it's about health. So let's talk about women. A woman at 18%, in my opinion, you're pushing the danger zone. Below that, potentially messing yourself up. Um, at some point under 18%, you're going to mess up your hormones, your menstrual cycle, all kinds of things. So yeah. a woman at 22% is going to look really good, really good. Um, you know, and I, I'm going back on my experience and the, the people that I've worked with as a personal trainer, you know, 40 years ago. Uh, and a lot of them were women. And so I know 22, 23% looks really good for a woman. I mean, again, you can see the muscles, you know, there's no bulgy fat spots at 22%. There's just not. Um, so women are different. Your thoughts with your clients and, and 
a, a good, and again, I want to emphasize everyone's different. Some women, just like men, sit very naturally at a lower body composition. That's okay. It's where your body wants to be. Everybody's got a set point of where they like to be. And it's going to be harder to get above that set point. And it's going to be hard to get below that set point of where your body wants to be. For a man, it could be anywhere from 10% to 18%. For a woman, it could be anywhere from... I don't know, maybe 16 or 17% up to 25%. Everyone's different. And that set point of where your body wants to be is probably going to be somewhere within those numbers. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And I, I think you make a really good point that in order to kind of go below or above those particular set points for, for yourself, because everybody, again, is different, um, you really have to push it one way or the other, whether it's kind of extreme dieting workout type of routines cardio all these things like what i'm doing right now is not very extreme because i'm 11 weeks out and so slowly recomping as we go there so i don't have to do anything extreme but um you know we're working towards that extreme of you know four and a half percent body fat or you know to to kind of go above where that natural limit is we're usually you know eating excess calories, excess this, excess that, trying to really bulk up, so to speak. Um, so yeah, you really do have to push one way or the other way in order to kind of leave that that healthy area that your body wants to stay at because your body will fight you because um, it wants to stay there. And so when, when you're wanting to change one way or the other, you're going to notice that your body always tends to try to go, go back to that. Um, that particular point. So, uh, but for women, to your example, Steve, I think that's absolutely right. Um, you know, they're going to have a higher body fat percent than men. So when people think of overall body fat and they're a woman and they're going, gosh, I heard it's great to be at, I don't know, 15%, 12%, you know, whatever that number is that people throw out online and they're like, gosh, I want to get there. I'm going, let's, let's hold off for a second. Because again, if we're going below 18 ish, um, I would say, you know, unless again, you're preparing for a show and you're not going to get to four and a half percent body fat usually. Now, there are some female, you know, like bodybuilders that are like in the Olympia and things like that. Totally different story, totally different world, really, at that point. But a person who's non competing, who just wants to be healthy, like if we're getting too low there, there are a lot of things different in the female versus the male in terms of things that can start kind of having. Uh, adverse side effects from having too low body fat because, you know, contrary to popular belief, you do need body fat. You know, we can't just go get rid of it. It's there for a reason. We don't need excess, but we do need some. And so, yeah, trying to get those super low numbers, whether you want abs or whatever the case might be, like do it in a healthy way. And that's why working with a trainer is really good because you can work toward that goal instead of following some influencer or celebrity diet plan or whatever, that's just going to leave you probably not very healthy and also not reaching your goal. Yeah. And just another thing to kind of put it in perspective is let's take a man, go back to a man at about 15%. That's where you're going to be able to start to see someone's abs, depending on how thick mm -hmm. they are and how big they are at about 15% is where you're going to see some abs. So that tells you, and you know, everybody always underestimates. Everyone does it. I probably do it. You know, somebody's really at 18% and they go, I'm at 11. No, you're not. You know, <laughs> nobody's usually as lean as they say they are. You know, it's, it's just not like that. Um, so um, it's important to be realistic and you're trying to maximize your health. And mm -hmm. it's... Uh, it's fun to work out. It's fun to do all that stuff. But you also said something that, hey, your body's going to resist if you try to go the other way. So if you're eating in a calorie surplus, you're eating more calories than your body can burn. Just what you said, your body's going to try to burn them. Your body's going to try to work harder and burn those calories to get back to maybe your body likes to be at 15%. It's going to try and maybe you're eating consistently at a 400, 500 calorie uh, surplus, more calories than your body can naturally burn. Your body's going to try to burn those calories. It's going to try and burn them. And it's at some point, it's going to give up. Okay, oh, yeah. you're making me work too hard. 
I'm storing some body fat. Absolutely. So I'll go past my set point. I'll go past my set point at, and look, everyone's different. I'm just throwing numbers, just kind of pulling them out of my butt. So your body's going to say, okay, I'm going to reset my set point at 19%. So let's go ahead and store some of this until this guy stops eating in a surplus, but I'll allow, I'll allow it, my body to go up to 19%. So it'll go very quickly from 15 to 19. And then it's going to go, come on, man, really? Still? I don't want this much body fat. So it's going to, again, try to burn that excess. And it's going to be hard to get past that sticking point, that set point. But your body will, again, give up and go, all right, how about 23%? I don't like this, but I'll let you do it. So boom, now you go from 19 to 23, 24%, and the process starts again. That's why you don't get fat overnight. And you also don't get lean overnight because now – your body goes down to like, you start going the other way, you get down to like 21%, 20%, and your body's going, hey, ho, 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 you know, give me some more calories. And so oh, it's yeah. going to slow down and try to hoard that body fat. And so you've got a sticking point now at 20, where maybe it was before all this process, maybe it was 15. So now... Your body's going to go, okay, okay, you're eating in a deficit. I'll give up a couple percent of body fat. Okay, down to 18. So it goes down and up like that. Your body's going to resist you past up or down that uh, set point. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that happens for everybody. So even for myself, again, you know, for show prep and stuff like that, you know, we have to kind of push to get below that. And even right now at 207 pounds, that's where I've been for the last probably 30 days. Have I increased cardio a little bit, you know, workouts are more intense, all of those things, been eating clean, all of that. But my body right now, it's very happy at 207 pounds, probably around 10% body fat or so. Um, but what I've also seen because I've been eating clean and those types of things, and people can see this as well when they start that type of a of a routine, so to speak, is, you know, your body starts, you know, recomposition. So, you know, less body fat, more muscle mass. For me, it's obviously different because I'm, you know, working out almost every day and preparing for a show and working out certain ways. But, you know, you can see that recomposition. So people look at, you know, body fat percent, which is great. Um, they pay way too much attention to what's on the scale. Um, I always tell people that's a tool. Don't pay attention to it 100%. It's great to know your weight, but know your body fat percentage. That's more important. So things like that where I don't look, I look leaner now than I did two weeks ago, but I weigh exactly the same. So that's one of those things people really have to understand how the body works and, and how those things fluctuate, but in a good way. Um, but yeah, they have to set those realistic goals because otherwise it just end up being disappointed and, and not really furthering their fitness journey um, or health journey, really you know, fitness, health go one hand in hand, but people often take fitness as I got to go to the gym and lift heavy barbells, you know, and that's not, that's not it. It's get in the gym, go outdoors, wherever, and just start being active and start, you know, making it so your, your body's moving and you're constantly able to move. And that's what we want to continue is moving into your eighties, nineties, whatever that case might be so that you're, you're able to enjoy your life. Yeah. And, you know, cause I know what this is like trying to get down really lean and I've done it before. Um, get down to about 10, nine, eight percent and your body's not used to that low of a body fat composition. It's, it's, it's like your body's starting to talk to you, bro. What are you doing? Give me some food. Mm -hmm. I don't like this. What are you doing? I ain't giving up any more of this body fat. Leave me alone. I'm not giving up not one more ounce of this body fat. You better start eating something. That's how your body responds. So you're fighting against your body going down and going up. Absolutely. All right. So, David, if people want to see you, see what we're talking about on social media, they can see what you look like with a shirt on. Where's your social media? So Instagram, I have 
two different accounts. The one that uh, for my personal fitness journey, my show prep journey that's currently going on and past ones actually as well. Um, you can find me at uh, on Instagram at David Wright underscore fitness and then personal training tips, my boot camp, things like that under my new fitness training page at Wright Fitness Training on Instagram. Okay, David, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks, Steve.